Well, hello and good morning, everyone. How are we doing this morning? Hey, if you're watching online right now, I just want to give you a special welcome. Thanks for being with us wherever you are at. I hope that whether you're gathered here or you're online, that you are blessed this morning and you enjoy your time with us this morning. And uh, how fun was that three minutes, right? I love looking in on ourselves like that. It kind of reminds me of when I was a kid, one of the highlights was when my dad would go into the closet and get the projector out because the projector meant we were going to get our 8mm movies out and look at, look at ourselves as a family on that film. I'm, I know I'm dating myself. Some of you are like, what's 8mm, right? <laughs> but I loved it. It was a lot of fun. And the thing about it is I loved watching it because you'd look at yourself and you go, oh my gosh, look at how small we were. Look at what we looked like then. And if you were here last week with Pastor Dave, he gave us a fantastic message about who we were then, right? It was the idea that um, we're looking sort of on the screen of our foundation and where we have come from. And I love what Pastor Dave said, that we stand on the shoulders of those that have come before us. That we stand on the shoulders of those that come before us. And that movie that we just watched was three minutes worth of knowing that we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. And it's great news. It's really hopeful. And I hope you feel encouraged today as we continue to talk about who we are as a church. And what I want to do is I want to take us as a church kind of bring us into our proverbial house, put us up against the doorframe of our kitchen, and take a pencil and see how tall we've gotten, how much we have grown. And then what I want to do is I want to take who we are and compare us to the Acts 2 church, the earliest of God's churches, and say, how do we line up against them? How do we measure up against them? Not that we need to be them, but I think if God designed a church early on to look a certain way, how do we look? in relation to how they looked. What was compelling about that church? What's compelling about Grace Community Church? Who are we and what are we about? That's what I want to look at this morning. You know, when I came to Grace, I came here on April 8th of 2012. Now, I didn't just come here randomly. It actually has a backstory on how I got here in the first place. I went over to a friend's house with my family for a dinner. And we had been uh, gathering with this particular family, or good friends of ours, we've been gathering for a while, and we as a family, my family, were looking for a church. And I knew my friend and his family had a particular church here in town. And I remember, you know, not really knowing what exactly we were looking for, but hey, knowing my friend's got a church they go to, so what's the first thing you say when you have this conversation is, hey, maybe I could come to your church. Maybe, maybe we could connect up on Sunday and go to where you go. And what he responded, the way he responded to my question kind of uh, took me aback. It's not what I expected. He said, you know, our church isn't doing really good right now. We're not as healthy as we should be. And so... It wouldn't be good for you to come to my church, but I have some friends that go to this other church that I know about. It's called Grace Community Church, and I've heard that it's very welcoming. I've heard they have a really good teaching, and I've heard they have a great kids program. I think it's going to be what you're looking for. Let me... Let me send you over there and see how that goes. And suffice to say, we came here on Easter of 2012. And we stayed, and we have been here ever since. And what happened to us after Easter 2012 is a story for another day. But suffice to say, the whole reason we came to Grace Community Church, the word on the street. The word on the street. It's the reputation and the rumors of this church and it being a healthy church and a place that was compelling even though the person I was talking to didn't actually go to that church or wasn't actually a part of the body and didn't call that their family or their home, yet somehow compelling enough to send a friend over to it. So I came to see for myself, and I wonder what brought you here. Did you come to see for yourself something that someone had said, something that you had heard about this church? Maybe it was the same things that I was told. Maybe it was something entirely different. Here's what I want to do this morning. I want to go and take a look at the earliest church that we see in Acts chapter 2. I want to find out what made that a compelling community and what did that family of God do and then look in on ourselves and see how do we measure up? What makes us compelling? I'm going to pray for that though. We need to pray before we do this because we're going to be in the word of God. So I'll pray for you and you can pray for me that we would see the beauty of God's church, his family as a gathered people 
And that as we see that beauty in his word and we see the beauty of what God has done in this church, that we would be thankful people who go and be the church wherever we are. Let's pray for that. Father, I do thank you for the power of your spirit that, that anointed a church that we're going to look at from 2,000 years ago and how you have anointed this church. And that there are millions of churches just like us who are gathered who are making up what we call the church your body, where Jesus is the head. And so as we explore your word, I'm going to need help, Father. I want to handle it rightly and carefully. But I want to be enthusiastic and joyful and passionate about it because I'm so excited about this message and I'm so excited about your word. And so help me to be a part of drawing people into your word and make them connect to you as they need to connect to you interpersonally and deeply in those places where right now they need encouragement and need hope. And God, we can come together and celebrate what you have done through this church for your glory and your pleasure. Amen. All right, so if you're following along in your Bible, and you like to do it that way, I love it that you do, go ahead and open your Bible up to Acts chapter 2. We're going to cover verses 42 and 47. Now, this is a very famous church. This is a church you've probably heard a lot of sermons about. This is the earliest of of God's churches that we see in the New Testament. But the thing is, is that there was something that got them started, something that initiated all of that. What was it? It was none other than the power of the Holy Spirit of God that descended on a people, 120 of them to be precise, who are gathered in a room. And who are there waiting for the Spirit. And the Spirit comes on them. And all of a sudden these amazing things are happening to them. And then they run out and they begin to share the gospel with people. And how do we know that they did that? Because later Peter is going to preach. It's really tough to preach to people who don't know you're ready to preach. So a bunch of people show up. Not just the 120, but 3,000 more. At least 3,000 more come to hear Peter preach the paint off the walls, and then all of a sudden, all these people come to faith all at once. I'm here to tell you, I would love to be the preacher that preaches and 3,000 people come to faith all at once. What the heck happened to Peter? What got into Peter? The Holy Spirit of God, that's what got into Peter, and that's what got into those people, and now all of a sudden these people are excited, and they're, they're coming to faith in Christ, and they're being baptized, and they're going out and becoming the church as a supernatural community who gathers for one thing and one thing alone, their faith in Jesus Christ. The church began with the Spirit and functioned in and through the power of the Spirit. And what do they do first? Let's go see. Verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Okay, stop. Super cool stuff. They devoted themselves. Don't miss that word. They devoted themselves to the word. The Greek word here um, that, that is talking about the devoted means exerting great effort to persist in doing something. Exerting great effort to persist in doing something. They're not just kicking the tires on the gospel, in other words. They're going after it like it's their job. Like, like there's nothing else that, that, that matters to them, and so they're just simply going after it really hard. And what they did was they focused firstly on the Word of God. I hope we're those people too. And by the way, If you're doing fill-ins right now, three of the next six are actually going to come from this one verse. So if you're feeling sleepy, don't get too sleepy too quick, okay? All right. The first one I want to start with and hang on is their devotion to the apostles' teaching. These people are just now drying themselves off from baptism. And what's the first thing they say? Teach us. Teach us. We want to learn. And so they're a learning community. That's your first fill-in. They're a learning community. You notice, too, it doesn't say they learn from the Bible or even the New Testament. What does it say? They learn from the apostles' teaching. See, what's happening here is these apostles, the reason they're an apostle is they came in direct contact with Jesus himself. And so they were simply teaching what they knew about what they had experienced as they walked with Jesus and as they had experienced him in person. That is the body of their work that they're working through in the earliest church. They didn't have anything else to teach from. They taught as they learned from Jesus. This is the collected 
works that they're working from here that would eventually become the New Testament. You see, we're still 15 years away from Galatians. We're still 30 years away from Ephesians and Colossians. It's not even going to be until the end of the first century that we're going to have the inspired, inerrant Word of God collected into one place, the thing we teach from here every week. See, the Word of God is the foundation of who they were. It's the foundation, of I, I hope, of who we are. We are devoted to teaching here. We're devoted to teaching you to teach others. Teaching from the Bible is the most essential thing that we do because at Grace, we believe right doctrine leads to right living. Let me say that again. Right doctrine leads to right living. If we do not, if we do not focus in on the authority of God's word, then we're just slaves to whatever sounds right. We've got to be focused in God's word. That church was, our church, I hope, is. And that's why at Grace Community Church, we have lots of places that you can learn about God. We have growth groups and DNA groups. We have Celebrate Recovery. We have special classes on special topics. But every single one of them is geared toward one fundamental thing, teaching the church to be a doing church. Teaching the church to be a doing church. All of them are geared toward the goal of making Jesus' name famous in the life of someone else so that they can go live like Jesus and go share the love of Jesus with someone else. That's who we are as a church. That's who they were as a church. Paul writes to his protege, Timothy, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The word of God is what grows us up into salvation and transforms us into the image of Christ. It requires truth for that to happen. But you know what else it requires? The Holy Spirit of God that convinces you it's the truth and then causes you to live in a Holy Spirit-inspired way to live out the truth. Remember this church was born out of the preaching of Peter. Born out of it. So the same word that makes us live will make us grow. The same word that makes us live will make us grow. Teaching is something we're known for here at Grace, but, but it's not because we're awesome. It's because we have an awesome God that does awesome things through people. We have an awesome God that empowers people like me and Dave and Brian and others to simply preach Jesus in a way that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. We make a fuss for Jesus' name that is empowered by the Spirit of God. It is not because we're good. It's because he's good. And before I go any further, I'm going to continue to say really kind things about Grace Community Church. I'm going to say really kind things about you and about me and how we are as the church together. But know this, firstly, none of what we do here is perfect. Anything and everything that, you, that we do here at Grace, know this. God is good, and whatever good stuff he does in and through his people is for his good pleasure and not because of our abilities. Amen? Amen. Verse 42. It says the word fellowship. This is a cool word. The Greek word is koinonia. It's probably a word you might have even heard before. Koinonia is a cool word because fellowship translates into not just a casual relationship that you might have with somebody. This is family. This is an intimate connection with people. Christian fellowship, first of all, is related, a, a, a vertical relationship with God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We baptized 12 people last week into that vertical relationship. But th what that does then is as we baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there is a horizontal relationship that begins to spread out that is in light of that vertical. Let me explain. See, we baptize in the name of the Father because we are brought into God's family as adopted kids. And so we become family because each of us are God's kids. So we baptize in the name of the Father. We baptize in the name of the Son because the Son is the servant Messiah who came to die for his people. And so we are to love one another as Jesus loved us. And so we serve one another as our demonstration of that. So we call ourselves servants of love and we are baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's primary job and primary function and primary responsibility is to declare the truth and glory of who Jesus is. So, 
We baptize in the name of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit indwells us, who convinces us of the truth and glory of Jesus Christ. So we become messengers of the gospel that go and share that with somebody else. Horizontal relationship changes how vertically we, we vertically changes horizontal. I know the difference between horizontal and vertical. I got it right in the first service. I did not get it right in the second. Sorry about that. Hey, that's how the early church functioned, though, a relational community. They were related to one another. That's your next villain. And that's how we are as a grace, that we're a family to each other as God relates to us. That's what we mean by having that, that vertical relationship that translates into horizontal relationship. Family to each other as God relates to us. So at Grace Community, we believe that everyone is welcome here because this is made up of everyday people. We are known as a community who helps people like you and me to belong because of God's perfect love as he invites imperfect people in to become family. God knows what's best for us, and he knows what's best for us is to be with him. So he says the thing that you need to be as a church is to be with one another. That's why we say we're better together. We are better together. You can't be a lone ranger in church, just so you know. If you came here thinking you can, it won't work out. You're meant to be with God's people because God says it's better to be for you to be with me. And that's all I really wanted when I came here in 2012. I just wanted a place to belong first because I knew that if I could find a place to belong, that would help me along my journey to believe. I think we have a pretty good reputation of that here at Grace. We have something for everything, everyone, but that something is always just pointing at Jesus as our common hope. That's what fellowship is as the body of Christ. And so verse 42, I'm gonna, let me take the second half of verse 42 again. Hit 43, and then I'm going to throw a change up on you. I'm going to skip down to 46. So don't be confused by what I'm doing. I'm pulling all this together for a reason. To the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Now down to verse 46. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. The church came together to eat a meal. That's pretty simple. We do that all the time here at Grace. What we think that that church probably did is they most likely also took communion while they were taking their meal together. We also see that they prayed together. And you notice they came attending temple and then gathered for meals and fellowship in their homes. So the, the thing is, is this early church still thought of themselves as God's people. They were the remnant of the Israelite people. So they were Jews, but they were Christians. So where do they find themselves? In temple. They still go to temple. But then they would leave temple and they'd go to their homes for more. So how do I interpret that? They went to church together and they did small group together. That's how they did it. That's how we do it. See, they believed also in prayer and the gathering for prayer. And that that prayer was essential to their work in sharing the gospel and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. And that prayer would be necessary to continue the health of their church. We see it the same way here at Grace. Jesus said when he got upset in the temple and he was throwing things around a little bit, what he was most upset about is that his house for his father, his father's house was a house of what? Prayer. Prayer. And instead they made it something else. Well, Grace Community Church, we think this is a house of prayer too. That's what we try, strive to be. That's why we have prayer teams that meet on Wednesday. We have a whole team of people to pray for all those things that you need prayer for. We also have a team of prayer people that come up to the edge of the stage and pray with you after service. They'll be up here, by the way, after, after service. But that's just us saying how much we care about prayer and how highly we think of prayer for being a healthy church. Well, this church was just the same. They had fellowship meals and communion meals and prayer time and attended church and small group together. And the result of it was awe. That was the result of their awe. Did you catch that word? It was awe and glad and generous hearts. Well, what do awe-filled, glad and generous hearts also generally do? They sing together. That's probably something else this church did. They sang together, and that's something that we do together. And we do that because we have awe awe-filled hearts, 
glad, and generous. That's why we worship together. I love that Pastor Brad often says we don't do worship on Sunday. We come as worshipers on Sunday. Meaning, we come as worship in a state of mind that is wrapped around awe and glad and generous and thankful hearts. And so you come here as a worshiper to do worship. There's a difference. They were worshiping community because gathering to worship is fuel for the mission. The reason we gather for worship is to fuel ourselves for the mission of God. The apostles, you see, according to the word of God, says they were going out and doing signs and wonders, and they were doing that to prove the authenticity of the church and the authenticity of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That's why the, that's why the signs and wonders were happening. See, they were anointed by the Spirit of God to proclaim the glory of Jesus through signs and wonders. Well, at Grace Community Church, we may not be doing the exact signs and wonders, but if you think that you are not participating in a sign and wonder when you share the gospel with somebody and they come into faith, well, let me tell you, you don't understand what it means to be spiritually dead and made alive in Christ Jesus. That is a sign and a wonder. That is what Grace Community Church does. That's how worship fuels us. We're a church that gathers to worship because it worships. And that puts Formula One fuel into our hearts and go do the mission of God to go and be the church, to say and do what Jesus does, and to tell people who Jesus is. I was once part of two different food service ministries. Um, one served at the Jesus Center and one that served at the East Avenue Church. And uh, the way the calendar worked out, I was serving on each of those independent teams uh, at the same time in, in one week. Now, that's not unusual or weird. But what was, was that in each instance, when I went to go and serve on those two different occasions in two different places with two different groups of people, each time I had somebody come to me and say, hey, where are you guys from? Oh, Grace Community Church. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know you guys. You guys are here all the time. That happened in both of those places. And what warmed my heart, what got me so excited was to know that there were all these people who were being the church that I didn't even know about. They were doing their work in secret unto the Lord. And that got me excited because as we are a people who might be known, what that says is we are a people who want to make Jesus known more. That's what was happening. That's what got me excited. And that comes from being a community that sees Sunday as a launching pad for the mission of God, for his glory and the good of our city. Verse 44 and 45 now. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. Okay, stop. I'm going to slow down on this turn because this scripture is sometimes misinterpreted and I want to be abundantly clear on what this means. The Spirit of God was working on them to create a unity, a unified body of people. That's what it means by all who believed were together. And that took shape in in the way of voluntary, compassionate sharing. That's what all things in common means. This is not socialism, it's not communism, it's not even a hippie commune. These people got together because Jesus was their all things in common. Jesus was the point of why they got together, and they just simply helped meet each other's needs. It was not wealth redistribution like we do on April 15th. They were just meeting each other's needs, man. They weren't doing anything more extraordinary than what you guys do all the time. They were a unified community, and that's what made them or showed that they were unified. It's just how they gave to one another. See, they were unified by their common Father, God Himself. They were unified by their common Savior, Jesus, and they were unified by the common Holy Spirit who took possession of every one of them. Man, woman, Jew, Gentile, black, white, Republican, Democrat, cat, dog, 49ers, Raiders. It's all inconsequential. It no longer mattered to them anymore. 
Jesus changed what mattered most. And so they gave themselves away to show the love and grace that they had received. That's what they were doing. Jesus brings unique people together to change what matters most. That's your takeaway from this. Jesus brings unique people together to change what matters most. See, their priorities had changed because Jesus changes what people think is important. When Jesus comes into your life and changes what's most important, it's really easy to start to give things away to people. And that's who we are at Grace. We're kind of a come-as-you-are kind of church. We don't tell people that you need to get rid of your junk before you come to church. We tell people, please bring all of your junk to church so that Jesus can rip it out of your hands. That's what we want. Don't clean yourself up before you get here. Come as you are. Because Jesus wants to clean you up. No matter what age or stage of life you are in, Jesus is still the common answer for that church. He is still the common answer for this church. For them and for us, the result of that will be a generous community. We'll be a generous community. We can't help ourselves. Because God is generous with his love and grace, so we should be that way with others. Pretty simple principle. I know you've heard it a thousand times. But the reason that we extend love and grace to others is because that is who God is and what God does. So he tells us what we should do. 1 John 3, 16 to 18. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. See, God has given each of us a grace that is not meant to end with us. It is meant to keep on moving towards someone else. You cannot hoard grace. It doesn't work. Without selfless and sacrificial compassion, grace just ends up in a storage unit rather than moving on and letting it take action in somebody else to show what God is like. That's what we're doing when we extend grace. We show what God is like. See, grace changes the way we care by showing what God does. Grace changes the way we care by showing what God does. And that's what I love about Grace Community Church. This is a crazy generous church. Not just in terms of money, but in terms of the time people give, the talents that people bring to this church. Do you know that we have a bunch of dudes that started a ministry based on the sheer fact that they're really good with tools? And they started that ministry to say, you know what, there's widows that can't take care of their house. So you know, let's create a ministry and bring all of our talents together and all of our tools. And we'll go take care of widows who can't take care of their house. Do you know that in our small groups, in our growth groups, we have people that actually help people move enthusiastically? How does that happen? That is the spirit of God if it ever was, Yes? Because I hate helping you move. But I will because of the Spirit of God and His grace. But not only that, we have people in our growth groups who have actually brought groceries to people within their growth group because they were going through a tough time. Do you know that we've had people here who have given away a car to somebody, like didn't even think about it because of need? I think about my brother, this friend of mine that I love so much, and some of you know, his name is Frank Macias. Homeboy has three storage units full of stuff. It's not his stuff. It's stuff that people have given him because he has a ministry. His everyday ministry is to listen with the Spirit of God for what people need and then connect something he has in one of his storage units to that person in need so that they can come in contact with Jesus. That is how you do it. That is how you do it. That is Grace Community Church. That's who we are. Generous to the bone because God is gracious. You know we have a reputation. This is a little bit off, but you know we have a reputation that people don't know how to give around here? (laughs) That's not generally something you brag about, but we love that because the reason is we never ask you to give. You don't ever see a plate get passed around here, and we rarely ask for anything, and yet you give so extravagantly 
Why? How? Well, the Spirit of God, of course. How else could it be? How else could it be? That's the reason it happened in that church 2,000 years ago, and it's happening in this church today because the Spirit of God is moving, and it compels people to just give compassionately and sacrificially. In other words, it looks like the cross. It looks like the cross. You see, people that have made contact with the cross imitate the work of Jesus. These are the kind of folks that take cuts in the back of the line, not the front of the line. You get what I mean? Because in Jesus' kingdom, it's not our accolades that we're rated by. It's how much we've sacrificed. And Jesus' people get that. And so they do it. The last verse is the one that for me inspired the theme of the message. Verse 47 says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Their praise of God and the way that they praised God gave them favor with the people. Were all the people coming to faith? No, but apparently all the people were showing them favor. See, they had a good reputation, and it not, it not only impacted the good vibes of the community, which it did, but it actually expanded God's kingdom daily, according to the word, simply by being who they were. That happened because internally, internally within their church, they were moved by the Holy Spirit to have joy in the truth of the apostles' teaching, to be gathered as a family, to create a place of authentic worship. They had unification by ditching everything that made them different and making it inconsequential. And then they had a generosity that was crazy uncommon. And so... Externally, they enjoyed popularity and respect from their community. Pretty simple formula. They grew out of the word on the street. They had a reputation as a welcoming community. Now look, the early Christians were often ridiculed as being too exclusive, too different. I'd say we are too sometimes, right? As the modern church, I hope we are. But as you can see, in these verses, many people were drawn to Christianity because it's different. Because look, if you're not different, you just become irrelevant. As a church, we have to be different. And I wonder if we enjoy the same thing. An attractive faith that isn't ordinary. I think we do. I hope we do. Every Sunday, we tell people to be the church. And what we mean by that is, firstly, the church is not a building, it's a people. But secondly, we go and be the church as we demonstrate our faith in a way that is compelling to others, different, unusual, uncommon. We're going to be the church wherever we are by sharing an attractive faith. Now, what I mean by that is not that we have to take the gospel and look, make it look beautiful. The gospel is totally beautiful. Just present it as it is. Just present it as it is. It is attractive as God made it. All you got to do is say, look, here it is. We've often said we want to be the kind of church that if we picked up all our people in our building and we moved it to someplace else, that the city would be sad that we left. That's the kind of church we want to be. One of the very first things that new visitors often tell me is they feel super welcome when they come to Grace Community. Some visitors have actually told me they feel too welcome. They would really like to come in on some anonymity, please. I don't need 18 people saying welcome. But that's who we are as Grace Church, right? That's who we are because that's who God is. He's just a welcoming God that invites everyone into his family. So we're just being the same. So look, whatever you walked in here with today, whatever made you almost not come to church this morning, whatever you're walking in here with today that you hope somebody else doesn't find out, Welcome. Thank you for bringing it here, where it belongs. Where it belongs. See, we're the kind of family that doesn't make much of ourselves. We just want to make much of Jesus. Brian and I and Dave joke, you know, we don't make, we don't make a big deal out of ourselves. We don't take ourselves seriously, but we take God's word seriously, and we take Jesus seriously, and that's the kind of church we want to be. See, what 
we're hoping, is that out of that, you can take all that stuff that you might have walked in here with today, so, and you can present it to the cross in such a way that you don't feel alone. You don't feel ashamed, you don't feel stuck, and you don't feel hopeless. That's who we want to be as a church, a welcoming church that welcomes you with whatever stuff you got. What brought me into grace way back then was I felt welcome, and I stayed because I felt welcome, and I felt like whatever junk I had in my life was also welcome too, and we hope you feel that as well. We believe that when you do, you'll go and be the church wherever you are because then you'll share a welcoming faith. One that invites people in no matter what they got going on in their lives. And I believe that's happening because our numbers continue to grow. But that's not because we're great or we're doing something great. It's because we serve a great God who does great things through his people. Amen? So what brought you to grace? Maybe you were born into this church. A few of you probably were. Maybe someone kidnapped you. I hope so. Maybe you got here by accident. Maybe you did careful research before you came here. I don't know what the reason is, but you got here somehow. But the bigger question is, what causes you to stay? The early church of Acts was first and foremost God's glory displayed through a people. The Spirit of God had moved into a neighborhood, took a bunch of unlikely people, pulled them together and made them family so that they could go out and save some in the name of Jesus. Grace Community Church has the exact same aspirations and desires. And maybe that's why you've called this home. That we would be a community known in our city as a place to belong and believe. That's our hope. A genuine community of God's grace, knowing God's love, showing and sharing it with the people who run into us and make contact with us in our everyday lives. We want to be the church that praises God and that results in a good reputation and our reputation is based on the fact that we love each other really, really well so that we'll love everybody else in our community really well. We want to be the kind of church that results in a certain reputation, one where people experience the goodness of God. How will we continue to be that kind of church? Only by the Spirit of God. And so let's pray for God to continue to do in us what we hope happens, that we would be a church, the kind of church that he desires, the kind of church that we all want to belong to, and the kind of church with an excellent reputation for being as Jesus is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this church that you have given us a glimpse into and what you had done through those people and what you continue to do through these people, us, your church today. And Grace Community just represents one part of that, God, one part of a community who have been brought together, unlikely and uncommon, made into a unified family, a community of believers who have come to proclaim your name, to glorify you as we are very satisfied with you, to come as worshipers who gather for the fuel of going and doing mission. And God, we would create a place where people can come and belong and to believe. Help us to do that by your spirit. Help us to do it with humility and with grace. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Next week, come on back. There's part three of this. Pastor Brian's going to be back to tell us our future. He's going to look into the future and see what we're going to be like. And so come back for that message. It should be really exciting. We hope that you'll join us online for that message as well. Now, as always, you are the church. Now, go be the church. God bless you, and have a great morning. Do not forget, we have a prayer team that will be up here right now to pray with you if you would like some prayer. God bless you. Have an excellent morning, everyone.